This is the Inside Podcast Network. This episode of Inside Central is brought to you by Savision, makers of live maps and vital signs for System Center. Vital Signs provides an advanced, always on, real time performance and troubleshooting view for Microsoft Hyper V. For more information and to download Vital Signs for free, visit www.savision.com. Hello and welcome to a very scary episode of Inside Central. This is episode 13 for Halloween 2011. I am your host, Dan Kreger. Uh, enough of that, I think. Joining me as always, Mr. Pete Zerger. Hey, Pete. Hey, Dan. Thank you for that bone-chilling introduction. I wouldn't go so far as to say every bone bit as scary. Every bit as scary as the inflatable lawn ornaments that I see as I drive through the neighborhood. <laughs> They're not scary, they're cute and cuddly, surely. <laughs> Indeed. Um, now, it's, it is Monday, it is Halloween, um, so I'm sure you've got some trick-or-treating to do uh, a little later, so I'm not going to keep you all day. <laughs> yes, that's what I need, is more candy. <laughs> um, so, that being said... Um, we've we've had a run of uh, announcements from Microsoft over the last uh, what would you call it seven to ten days? Um, do you yeah, want to give or take? Give or take. Right. Um, so I guess we'll we'll spend the majority of today um, talking about some of those announcements, um, and I guess ultimately, and let me pull up the lower third for this. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is what's new in System Center 2012. So we've, we've spoken a bit about uh, Orchestrator or Opalus. We've spoken uh, about Configurations Manager and Operations Manager. But as a whole, uh, what can we expect from System Center 2012? What's changed over the last seven to ten days um, in regards to some of these announcements? And we'll take that a little bit further as well. So um, do you want to get us started, Mr. Zerger? kick it off yeah so so since we last spoke uh, we've had three or four relatively significant announcements so so I think right before we spoke last we saw the uh, the release candidate for virtual machine manager 2012 right so effect effectively our cloud fabric uh, or, or management layer for our cloud fabric anyway um, and then in this last week, uh, we saw our first public betas for Service Manager 2012 and App Controller 2012, and also the announcement of the uh, the Microsoft Private Cloud CEP, uh, designed to uh, to get the uh, the IT community at large and companies everywhere trying out private cloud, educating their, their themselves, and getting comfortable. So, of course, so C CEP is the Community Evaluation Program. Exactly, exactly. And so I think that you know, really says it all. Um, you know, we see this uh, de-productization, this, this uh, uh, shift in focus from products to shift in focus uh, on, on a scenario on cloud. Uh, so we hear a lot of talk of System Center 2012. And, in fact, if you go out and look, you'll notice that the product naming conventions have even changed across the suite. There's a single download page now for the early evaluation editions of all these System Center 2012 family of products, and they are labeled, uh, for example, System Center 2012 Operations Manager. Um, so very clearly, Microsoft is driving uh, to this uh, brave new world where you know cloud is at the center and the product we're really intended to view system center uh, as this single integrated entity right right uh, all of our traditional links you know I used to to go to microsoft.com and I'd put uh, forward slash OPSMGR and that would take me to the ops manager page um, which it doesn't do anymore incidentally gives me an error but uh, but if I put in forward slash system center or forward slash cloud um, I wind up in the same place. I wind up on a server and cloud 
uh, portal of sorts where I can find all sorts of information about System Center 2012 and, and Microsoft Private Cloud um, in particular. So, IT people everywhere, you know, wondering what happens to your jobs. Um, you know, I think that's the answer. You know, get uh, get focused on System Center as a suite and accept where where things are headed here. There you know, are days of being able to uh, to specialize easily on one product. I think are uh, behind us. Yeah, I, I, um, we've we have spoken about this before, and um, again, I, I spoke to to Paul Thorot about this, and um, that is the fact that. You know, if you if you want to move ahead uh, within technology, you, you need to broaden uh, your knowledge base. Um, you know, if you're a if you're a standard sysadmin, you really need to be focusing on PowerShell. Uh, as Microsoft shift gears with PowerShell um, and ramp up, you know, the the number of commandlets alone, and the fact that uh, that PowerShell is now integrated into just about every console, let alone the operating system and applications. Um, so. Uh, you know, and then again, adding into that, um, the possibility of infrastructure moving from on-premise to to the cloud, um, applications moving from on-premise to the cloud. You know, the manageability of these shifts focus. Um, so, you know, we we really need to be a lot more agile um, in in what we do. I guess that's for sure. That's for sure. So we're looking at a suite of products that's uh, growing in capability and you know in terms of their the sheer size based on their functionality. So so definitely a lot to absorb. Um, and I think that's you know maybe part of what the drive is from a Microsoft perspective to provide some uh, some proactive education on cloud. And that's to give people some focus on how these products work together in specific scenarios, which. Which isn't a bad thing, so maybe that maybe that helps the uh, the learning curve. Um, yeah, but you mentioned you know moving from on premise to off premise, so we have that that idea that you know not everything's going to be private cloud, and not everything's going to be public cloud. Microsoft said has said more than once that uh, you know they're going to make investments on both sides because hybrid cloud is where it's at. Companies are going to to utilize um, the elements. Uh, from the public side, where they don't have you know strong need for administrative, uh, you know for customization or data sovereignty, and they'll use private cloud for those situations where they need the the tighter control uh, and and higher customization. Um, you know that being said, you know App Controller came out after a long time. I think we we first heard publicly about App Controller uh, with the name App Controller behind it at MMS back in. Gosh, March, and so now here we are, you know, nearly November, and we just this last week had our first beta. Um, but you know, it's a really small product in the grand scheme of things. You know, it's focused on uh, app app controller. You know, depending on who you talk to, is basically you know the the replacement, the answer for um, the virtual machine manager self service portal 2.0. Right. So it's our new web-based UI, and in reality, if we look at the Microsoft messaging though around private cloud, uh, the ability of you know, that self-service interface really isn't limited to just App Controller. Now, what makes App Controller unique uh, are a couple of things. Number one, it allows us to leverage uh, to administer services that we have deployed in in VMM environments. Uh, multiple VMM environments, actually, so I can I have some capability to move uh, resources between multiple VMM infrastructures. But at the same time, I can snap in my uh, Azure uh, my Azure subscriptions and manage those from the same UI and control those for self service users. Um, you know, from what it looks like, maybe even more easily than than I can from from Azure. So um, that's just one way into the you know into the hybrid scenario. If we look at it from a service manager perspective, which is a much bigger product, um, and to put it in perspective, I was actually trying to find the size of my app controller download here. Um, it was less than 50 meg, um, and setup took less than five minutes. 
back my app controller download was 10 megs. 10 so, megs. And that's is that still Silverlight? Uh, yeah, still Silverlight based in the UI. Um, like I say, five, five minutes to set it up. It's, since it's, it's really lightweight, so you know, at least in your lab environment where it runs uh, really well if you just put it on your VMM server. Mm-hmm. It can share that SQL instance because it's not a, a high traffic heavy footprint database. Right. And and it's it's you know pretty interesting. So you know it gives me the same sort of UI that I see in uh, Virtual Machine Manager. I can see my virtual machines. I can see my services. What it does is is obfuscates all of those technical bits of the uh, the cloud fabric, the VIP templates and and other details that an end user is not really going to care about, a, a quasi-technical app owner. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're seeing the, uh, the obfuscation of technology in the first, in the first rev of, of the cloud story Microsoft was calling that, the service model, the, uh, the layer of abstraction between end user and technology. Um, but we can also, you know, with, with Service Manager, which came out, you know, publicly in their, with their first public beta, but uh, in Service Manager, we see some some interesting new functionality. Also, very much facilitating this self service experience from a different UI. Uh, so users everywhere are pretty comfortable with ticketing systems at this point. And with Service Manager, we know we can build uh, you know custom forms and and uh, uh, you know, tailor the UI for specific requests. We were doing that in Service Manager 2010. What's well, interesting about Service Manager 2012, um, number one, we have a couple of new connectors. So with Service Manager 2012, now we have uh, a connector for Orchestrator that brings the run books uh, directly into the Service Manager UI. So now I can leverage my Service Manager workflows to, to, to initiate run books. So basically, whereas in, in Opalis and the system center 2007, you know, 2008 family, I was driving my automation usually from uh, Opalis, you know, using some sort of monitor type activity to watch for changes in service manager. Now it's quite the opposite. Now we're seeing that from service manager with a couple of clicks, I can create a um, little template for my run book. I can, through a service offering, uh, put a service offering into the catalog that has a, a service request template to catch that input from my user. So, you know, if I want to let them onboard a, a new virtual machine or a new service for that matter in VMM, um, I can capture, you know, whatever details I need from them. If it's a machine name, department name, etc. Um, in Service Manager, all all within the UI now, I have this capability to build. Um, uh, a template that will allow me to capture input from the user. I can even use drop downs and the, and uh, your cascading forms, where where basically the input I require in subsequent fields is controlled by what the user selects earlier in the process. Yep. So, so the the authoring experience with Service Manager 2012 just went up several notches easier. Um, you know, the, you know, everything from, from customizing workflows and making those dynamic, uh, now dr- being able to drive our run books uh, from the service manager side and leverage all of that automation from directly within the UI. And then even the notifications that were such a pain in 2010, I've now got a wizard um, that allows me to configure notification based on all sorts of criteria. I can you know, choose a class like Say I want to you know, notify somebody every time an incident comes in that meets a certain criteria. Um, they, that's all UI driven now. Um, but service management is what what you know the big all encompassing offering was where we can leverage all of this now. So service management and release management are the two two big silos that uh, that came in in this release of the product. Uh, and I think release management was the number one question I heard at Emma, at uh, TechEd EMEA back in 2009 was when are we going to get release management. So we've got service management and release management. We've got the capability to, to drive all of this automation. And then the last mile here 
is how do we tie all that in with cloud aside from orchestrator? Because we, you know, if we're going to do self-service from service manager for our cloud assets, we have to publish all of that in service manager. We have to have those CIs there, right? Right. So in, in Service Manager 2012, in addition to this orchestrator connector that allows us to, to bring our uh, orchestrator assets in, and incidentally, we can not only initiate those run books from, from Service Manager, we can also track their progress. So, so when a workflow in Service Manager triggers a run book, it actually tracks its progress based on its ID and updates the service request with the results. So it can tell you if it's still running, if it succeeded, if it failed, that sort of thing. But there's also another new connector, and this one's for Virtual Machine Manager 2012. So now we can bring all of the uh, the elements of our cloud fabric uh, into uh, Service Manager as CIs. And those clouds, you know, we actually define our clouds um, in Virtual Machine Manager. I can define a I can define cloud capacity based on five elements. Uh, so I, you know, I can tie it to your capabilities around CPU, memory, disk, um, number of you know sheer number of VMs, and then the old quota points that we had with uh, with uh, VMM 2008. But between the virtual machine manager connector and the uh, the ops manager CI connector. I can populate server, the service manager CMDB with all my cloud assets now, and I can present this as a as a service offering and provide a request template, so the user can initiate a service request from there. So, you know, App Controller is just you know App Controller gives me that additional capability to uh, to have a more hands-on experience with my service with managing it. But in terms of the request process, you know, I can drive drive that right out of Service Manager now. So, right. And so, um, in terms of cl in cloud capabilities, it's it's all all encompassing across the suite now. It certainly is. I mean, the it, it touches uh, pretty much everything. I mean, it, it's certainly been Microsoft's um, push. Um, and, and particularly at MMS, you know, they made it very well known that cloud was where they saw everything moving, um, and they've they've put a lot of hard work, obviously, into the fact that, um, you know, yes, this is where they see the future of IT. Um, it's it's not they're not taking a real stab in the dark here. It's not you know a roll of the dice. They know that this is the future of IT, um, and they're doing their best to make sure that they're at the forefront of that. Yeah, and I, I follow a lot of the cloud cloud you know blogs and newsletters out there, and I find it's just mind numbing at this point. All of the really to me what looks to be brand you know brand focused marketing speak from a lot of cloud blogs, where I'm not really getting good technical info. I'm getting basically just a steady stream of announcements from you know cloud providers X Y Z out there as to what they uh, what they offer. And it really makes me wonder how how do all these companies manage to stay in business or even flourish? Because I think as um, you know, a business of any sort, I'd be really nervous about investing in a a cloud solution unless I knew it was back to the company that had some pretty deep pockets and that you know I knew they were going to be there in a year or five years. Right. You know, it's a very very uncertain world we live in right now with all the. Uh, with the rise and fall of companies in the cloud, you know, over here we have a big uh, video rental service called Netflix. Yep. And um, they are now in dire straits. You know, they go from being at the top of the heap to a poor management decision that lost them. They lost eight hundred thousand subscribers in a quarter. Um, and then they were. It was recently announced that uh, Star is a major network over here. Decided that they wouldn't renew their. Uh, content agreements, and now they're down, you know, darn near a million subscribers, and their number number one source of content. Yep. Um, so, what's their future look like? And that could happen with any of these little, you know, siloed cloud solutions. So. Right. I mean, Netflix is unique in that they also um, tried to separate out their streaming from their um, DVD rental and and 
then pulled it back in in house, going, "Oops, sorry about that. No, we won't do that." And I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's been one management cock up after another. Yeah, which actually kind of speaks to Microsoft's strategy here. You know, they're not forcing people to pick private cloud or public cloud. They're they're making an effort to manage both sides of the house. Right. And, and that's exactly what Netflix saw. His customers said, you know, you're not going to make me choose. You know, it was convenient when I had it all in one, so I'm not going to now manage two separate subscriptions because you want to, to change, you know, your revenue structure. Right. Yep. But... Um, yeah, so I don't. I, right now, I, I feel like there's just so much marketing that goes on with cloud. You know, and we had people approaching us at MMS at our booth, uh, telling us that they had complementary functionality to, to our services, and they wanted us to, to look at them, you know, for their cloud offerings. And and I, you know, even there, the same sort of steady stream of marketing gibberish I was getting through the blogs, I was getting from vendors walking up to me, right, on the trade show floor. Um, and I just don't understand it. I mean, to me, the system center story at least makes sense, right? We've got uh, a story about life cycle and a focus on, and, and, this, and this is where the focus is that I think makes the, the system center 2012 story make so much sense, is at the, at the end of the day, the reason companies will move to private cloud and the reason system center uh, makes this an interesting solution for companies. You know, number one, uh, you know, cloud and you know, one of the compelling benefits of cloud is agility. We're we're input we're enabling users with self-service functionality, so they're no longer waiting on service requests. Um, you know, number two, there's economy in the cloud, and I think this gets lost a lot of times. But the fact of the matter is, when we take the money that you know, five different departments would spend on their application servers, and we pool that together and buy a single chunk of resources, uh, now we've bought much more powerful hardware and storage capabilities than we could have as individual departments. Um, and the third piece of that is, you know, because we've now um, gone to a shared infrastructure, we've eliminated the uh, we've decoupled the uh, the the hardware uh, procurement process from the service deployment process. So now every time we want to onboard a service, we don't necessarily have this you know hardware uh, blocker every time, where I've got to make sure that I have hardware showing up on site at the right time. Right. Um, which means at the end we can we can now based on the shared infrastructure, expand and contract as we need to. So we have the elasticity that we hear about in every little marketing chit chat. Yeah, I mean, it's, it certainly also reduces the, I'll, I'll call it bureaucracy, um, that, you know, um, server commissioning has a tendency to run into in large organizations. You know, it can be six or eight weeks before the server is ordered and delivered and then, you know, the OS build and or well, forget OS build. You've got um, you know facilities management who need to rack mount it and pa put power to it and so on and so. I mean, it can be literally months before that server is actually operational and, and ready for deployment. Exactly, and so when we get that out of the way, when that process happens one time behind the scenes, um, when we're talking to you know the finance department that wants to roll out a new ERP app or the marketing folks are getting ready to, to ramp up a new new part of the website um, we're not talking about hardware anymore they just have to tell us what they need in terms of service and and we prepare to provision it so so the activity is around um, understanding how they want to deploy the service and how they might need to interact with it down the road so we can create you know, the appropriate service request and service manager. Right. We create a service template that they can then uh, dink around with in app controller to, to scale out um, and do their normal little um, administrative, you know, startup shutdown sort of activities. Mm -hmm. um, it changes the conversation, basically. and We get away from talking about all those topics that are so uncomfortable for a lot of people anyway, you know, outside of the data center admins. That manage the fabric. Um, so, so yeah, I, th I think that's all 
a good thing in uh, in that respect. Um, Getting back to your point in regards to you know the the uh, the vendors coming to you and, and, and marketing their their private clouds. Um, do you think that perhaps part of the issue is on the definition of private cloud uh, or public cloud or the cloud in general? I mean, um, it it really doesn't take much for someone to tout that that they have their own uh, infrastructure for for public private cloud and that they can offer you you know this that and the other. But ultimately, what what defines uh, what the cloud is? Yeah, and I, I, th I think that's important. And where people, I think, get confused is we, we assume, for example, that you know, private cloud means on my premises. And it doesn't necessarily. So we really have to, number one, you know, if we go to the, uh, the, the NIST definition of private cloud, it doesn't say that a private cloud has to be located on my premise. It, it talks about specific capabilities. So we have to think about private and public cloud in terms of, of their definition as computing models. So my private cloud means that I have a shared infrastructure that's dedicated to my business units. And that's all it means. I can have a private cloud sitting in a data center halfway around the world. But the point is, it's... Um, it's, it's my infrastructure, it's dedicated to me, I have data sovereignty there. Um, so the physical location doesn't so much um, really matter. Um, and where, where a lot of these vendors uh, come in isn't necessarily even private or public cloud centric. They come in with solutions to bridge gaps, uh, to provide, uh, you know, for example, I was talking to one vendor that basically has uh, you know, policy management uh, and compliance reporting. So they wrap some some security around our, our cloud resources and allow us to uh, to provision and secure. Um, you know, which is what Microsoft is uh, you know is, is moving toward with System Center 2012. We've got uh, you know if you look at App Controller, uh, App Controller allows us you know behind the scenes. App Controller is just the the presentation tier for the security that we established down in Virtual Machine Manager, the role-based security we set up with a self-service user role that we assigned access to a cloud. And on the Azure side, they're talking through the Azure API and using our Active Directory-based security to, uh, to control uh, access to, uh, to Azure based on the Active Directory uh, you know, the identity management that everybody's had in place for a decade now. Uh, so it's the same sort of, of thing. So um, I'm not trying to discount the, the potential value in a, a very complex enterprise to have, uh, you know, these sorts of functionality tiers that you can, you can pile on at the management layer to provide, you know, auditing or policy management or, or uh, you know, priv privilege. But, um, you know, for me, it's, secondary right now. I haven't heard of any third-party solution that everybody's using today. Right. Um, do you reckon we can break for uh, for two minutes while I tell the, the good folks about Savision, or did you have a topic that you specifically wanted to move into? No, you go right ahead. All right. Um, well, let me tell you about Savision. Uh, makers of live maps and vital signs. Um, Vital Signs is a, uh, a fantastic product that allows you to, uh, to see deep into the heart of your virtual machine uh, infrastructure. I'm just going to head on over and uh, bring up their website. Um, so these guys uh, do a fantastic job, uh, certainly within the system center space, um, of further enhancing, um, particularly operations manager, but, um, you know, um, also a virtual machine manager uh, in, in giving you that, that sort of uh, in-depth and as they say here, uh, pinpoint root cause of IT problems. So um, you know, it really allows you to, to delve into um, the, the real-time performance of your virtual environment um, and, and get the most out of uh, your, your virtualization platform. 
Um, and you know something that I, I'm not sure everybody's aware of is Live Maps hooks into Service Manager as well. Right. Yep. You know, we have Service Maps over there, so. Yep. You know, so I was just talking about vendors that you know, just mentioning that there are a lot of vendors that I don't hear everybody talking about. Live Maps is actually one that comes up all the time. Right. Uh, you know, in fact, I've got a I've got a, a System Center 2012 proof of concept I'm doing with a customer, and Live Maps actually showed up as a line item in one of the uh, the test cases. Okay, uh, so not it wasn't a specific re- well, it wasn't a requirement that that Live Maps fit perfectly. It was that Live Maps was the requirement. Yeah, they they said uh, they apparently they had read about Live Maps, and while we were you know demonstrating dashboarding it actually said demonstrate the functionality of live maps okay. uh, for reporting and dashboarding so it's sort of surprising absolutely um, su- surprising but but well ultimately n- not really um, I mean <laughs> uh, you know I've, I've, I've walked into a, a number of organizations where they're already well aware of, of uh, live maps and its capabilities um, wouldn't you know it? Something has gone awry with my PC. Um, but let me just finish by saying that, um, that... Let you just finish by saying that Microsoft should just buy Live Maps and we should just integrate that so it's free? Well, well I, I wasn't going to go that far. Um, hint, hint. There, no, look, I, I know. Um, I, I think there'd be... A lot of people out there that uh, that wouldn't disagree with you. Um, ultimately, you know, can can Civision do a better job uh, out on their own than perhaps Microsoft would? Would it just become uh, integrated into Operations Manager and, and not really extended? Um, look, knowing Microsoft's track record, there. knowing Microsoft's track record, it would get it would get better. Um, uh, that's, you, got, you got a good point, though. Yeah, that, that's not to say I'm, I'm, I don't mean to infer that it would get better. Um, I guess you know, they would continue to update and enhance the product as Civision are doing themselves. Um, and Civision, uh, I think, have announced um, the release of uh, or the the interoperability of of Live Maps with uh, Operations Manager 2012. Um, so you'll need to head on over to uh, civision.com to get additional information about that. But uh, what you can also do is head on over to civision.com um, and get your free copy of Vital Signs or Live Maps. Um, we highly recommend that you check it out. Uh, you'll get with Live Maps, you'll get five free maps, uh, which allows you to, um, I give, I guess, give it a test run. Um, and no doubt, once you have that installed and can really see the capabilities um, of both those products, uh, you'll want to extend them and uh, delve deeper. So we uh, we send our gratitude to uh, the guys at Savision, www.savision.com. Thanks, Pete, for being patient and for uh, assisting me there. I uh, seem to fall into a hole at some point. I, I did have the... Uh, the well, the, the collateral that they'd sent over um, to discuss, but I, I lost it. Couldn't find it, so I was. I well, was you know what? It. I'm an un, I'm an unpaid endorser of Live Map, so. Uh, well, I won't say I am as well, um, but certainly the uh, the money that I do get from them um, goes to supporting this fine podcast. Um, and ultimately, the plan is to, to get a few more people to endorse this so that I can pay the likes of, of Pete Zerger for his time, which is uh, precious, and uh, I'm very generous for that. But uh, what's next? So let's talk about what IT pros need to do to get ready for this tsunami of technology that's coming in Q1. So you know we've heard more or less that a, that a lot of a lot of RTMs are going to drop around the end of the year, which means everything's going to be GA, general availability around MMS and you know end of Q1. 
um, which means you need to get comfortable with you know half a dozen elements of System Center 2012 pretty quickly. If you're not familiar with virtualization, or at least you know, you know, don't don't have a good grounding there. You know, time time to change that. So you know, we said PowerShell. Uh, you called out correctly. You know, PowerShell is a definite must. Um, you know, virtualization is a definite must. Just as though, you know, just as Active Directory is a must. We've got an, a, a couple of uh, more assumed uh, baseline skill sets, and, and and these are baseline skill sets, at least from my perspective, when I'm looking for enterprise administrators or trying to hire a new consultant. You know, if you don't know virtualization, uh, if you don't have a baseline in Hyper-V and Active Directory and PowerShell, you're going to be limited in what you can do um, you know, when you sit in the administrator's chair. So um, certainly with the private cloud um, CEP, the, uh, the community uh, preview, if you can get signed up for that, there's going to be some free learning resources there. Um, and, there and not to say there's not been free learning resources for Microsoft before now. I think what we're going to have now are System Center 2012 specific resources because with this last set of releases, what's most significant, you know, number one, we actually have the products to work with, uh, but they're beginning to work together. So I can, you know, I can link Ops Manager 2012 to VMM 2012. Um, you know, App Controller, you can, you can, you know, connect into your VMM and Azure environments seriously, like in less than half an hour. Um, you know, they're not even really worth reading the instructions. <laughs> uh, it's so easy to use. Um, but, uh, you know, and the lagging element right now is if you want to work with, uh, with Orchestrator, um, you know, right now we're a little bit limited because we don't have the integration packs. You can use the, uh, the Ops Manager and Service Manager integration packs, actually work with their 2012 counterparts, so we can do some work there. Uh, but we don't have the VMM integration and, and, and Config Manager, etc. So in some respects right now we can just experiment with the promise of Orchestrator. Um, you know, versus what we're going to see when, when we get a little, little further along. I'm, you know, I'm afraid that those integration packs might be closer to RTM time frame before we, we, uh, we see the, the final releases. Right. Or maybe even after. I don't, you know, I don't know what their development cycle is, but no doubt you can't write an integration pack based on a, a beta. So. Um, no, and. As, as you pointed out, as these products start to go to, to RC, to the release candidate stage, you would expect internally at least perhaps Microsoft will start to ramp up um, the development of those integration packs and we, again, as you say, hopefully we'll see those come RTM mm -hmm. um, or at least general availability. Um, I, I, I can't imagine them releasing this out into the wild through, you know, general availability and not having those available and ready to, to go. Yeah, yeah, and if, if GA is, is March time frame, I think that gives them a lot of time. Right. So, we'll see what happens, but uh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, and, you know, and right now, it's not as though we're hamstrung and can't do anything. You know, you can, uh, VMM is, you know, based on PowerShell, the UI is based on PowerShell, so you can go click around and create an activity and in, in, perform an activity in VMM. And hit the little script, you know, show script button, and grab scripts that we can then leverage in Orchestrator. Right. Yep. Through standard activities over there, and incidentally, you know, Orchestrator is kind of an underpinning of a lot of this. So, um, I'm excited to see how the learning resources are going to shape up at Microsoft. I think you know, it all has to be very scenario based with private cloud in order for us to understand what's going on there. I just don't know what that's going to look like. I mean, you know, nobody nobody has time to go take a five-day course for each of six products. So right. I, I think there's going to have to be some creativity there. But there's some pretty good learning out there in the, uh, the TechNet virtual labs already. In fact, Orchestrator and Opalus are similar enough that if you understand Opalus 6.3, um, you understand Orchestrator more or less. The deltas there are going to be very easy for you to pick up, but the authoring experience is the same. The concepts are the same. A lot of the the uh, run books that you create in the palace can come straight across, and the Microsoft course, the uh, the mock course that's in the catalog for a palace, 
uh, a lot of that is available online in the virtual labs. Right. With recorded with recorded. Uh, yeah, they've got the PowerPoints recorded. They've got the labs hosted. So, you know, if you've got time to kill, we've got holidays coming up here, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and a lot of lazy weeks in between. You know, if I was an IT pro, I'd, I'd start figuring out PowerShell real quick if I hadn't already, and I'd get a ba- you know, I'd get a basis in um, you know Palace and System Center using some of these scenarios online. You know, people ask me what books you should buy. You know, go buy the Unleashed series and put them on your bookshelf so when you have a work problem and you need to look something up, you've got them there. Um, but my answer is don't go buy any books. My answer is if you want to learn quickly, get online and see what kind of virtual labs Microsoft has. Sign up for the private cloud CEP and set yourself a goal to be conversant at level 200 by, you know, January-ish. Yep. You know, and then and then you're not worried about your job anymore because your your CIO is worried about keeping smart people in the chairs to manage their private cloud. Yep. So for me, for me, I think private cloud for the IT pro, for the smart IT pro that's upgrading his skills, means that he just has more leverage over the boss to get more money and more job security. Sure. Um, if if someone came to you. Uh, question without notice. Um, I seem to do this quite a lot. Um, but why not? So if, if, a, if a second level engineer came to you, you know, desktop related, looking to move into the server space um, and said to you that, you know, he doesn't want to be a, a, an IT generalist, um, you know, mm-hmm. he, he, wants to, he wants to have a, a specialised bent, what, what would your recommendation to, to him be right now? You know, if if he said to you, "Look, I'm I'm going to spend the next three months knuckling down, studying, you know, doing what I need to do," what should I do? Here's exactly what I would tell him, and I've, I've told more than one person this. So, so we know with private cloud, you're going to na- need to understand how to work with a lot of products. But we know at the basis of this, the automation, the high value. Um, the high value elements that make a cloud elastic and agile and all that. It's the agility really, you know, of all the marketing terms. Yep. Um, or orchestrator is where it's at. Um, every engagement I'm involved in, almost without exception, orchestrator comes up. Um, and with orchestrator, I would assert that I can I can give anybody the resources, access to the resources online they need to be pretty good with orchestrator in a couple of days. Now, if you want to learn the secrets and be like a level 400 orchestrator guy, go sit in a classroom. Come take our boot camp, you know, and, and let me just, you know, tell you everything I know and, and give you run books and all that. But if you want to get pretty good with orchestrator, you can do it on your own in a couple of days. So if you've got those Friday afternoons free, uh, in a month of Friday afternoons, you can be good on orchestrator. And in the, in the process of getting good on orchestrator, you're going to touch different system center products in certain particular scenarios. So you'll touch Ops Manager for incident remediation. You'll touch something with Service Manager for provisioning. Um, and and um, you'll touch VMM potentially for, uh, for VM provisioning. But there's lots of system center scenarios so you can sort of take yourself down this uh, self-guided path of scenario-based learning based on the materials that Microsoft already puts free on their website. Right. Um, and I think I think for somebody that knows nothing of System Center today and very little of, of you know, nothing of private cloud, start with Orchestrator. Work your way into PowerShell. You know you'll touch some Opalus. You'll touch some Opalus hands-on labs that have PowerShell in them. You know, and PowerShell. My lord, there was actually a really popular website I used to use from a guy named Clarence, Clarence Washington, and he actually shut it down. Because he said, you know, it's a lot of work to keep this up, and PowerShell has taken over. He said, there are great PowerShell out there. I'm obsolete. Um, and that's the fact. Just as Opalus is very easy to learn, you can learn PowerShell in um, a month of Friday afternoons. In fact, Don Jones, in fact, if you save your Friday afternoons for, for Opalus and Orchestrator, save your lunches for, like, Don Jones... Uh, you know, PowerShell lunch sessions. Um, and 
run, you know, if you want to do your own hosted labs, download the VHDs from Microsoft and put them on a Windows 2008 Hyper-V server. Um, well, they pay, should I point out that, you know, we record roughly Friday at a lunchtime. So if you're going to have your Friday lunchtime free, you want to be watching uh, or listening to us live. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, if you listen to us on a Monday or on a, on, on a Tuesday, we generally tend to record on a, on a Friday. Um, but yes, yes. Sorry, I, I interrupted. Keep going. No, that's, that's, a great, that's a great point, you know. And, and one thing I think we can do here to help people is to understand, help them understand the landscape of what's coming, you know, because you and I are, you know, neck deep in the, the betas and the release candidates here. I mean, I'm, I spend every week with one customer or another uh, helping them, you know, complete proof of concepts around, you know, a particular 2012 product like Ops Manager or a private cloud proof of concept showing them how that will actually meet, you know, certain business objectives. Um, you know, I think that's one thing we do have here is we can tell you um, what's going on out there in the world of, of System Center and private cloud uh, easier than you can go research it and read it. Right. Um, you know, I've had more than one weekend discussion with friends at this point that are very product specific and system center that uh, say, you know what, I'm going to buy you a beer because in a couple of hours you're going to fill in all these gaps that would take me, you know, days or weeks to go read about. Um, and instead I get it in 45 minutes. Is that how long a so, Vulcan mine mill takes, is it? 45 minutes? That is, uh, a Vulcan mine mill takes approximately 47 minutes. Um, but, but, you know, I'm... You know, I'm I'm no more clever than the average IT professional. I just happen to, to be a very hard worker, and I'm in the right place at the right time now, working with private cloud. Um, and what I what I do say to people that want to to become you know something of a specialist, as you say, is you know choose where you want to specialize. And and so if you know private cloud is is you know the poison you pick, uh, go sign up for the CEP. Find those little bite-sized, you know, elements of, of learning out there through hands-on labs and webcasts, and uh, and ramp yourself up day at a time. You know, if you you invest an hour a day at the end of a month, that's 30 hours. Uh, that is right there, uh, a four-day training course. Right. Um. But with the uh, you know, with the benefit that you've had, you know. A month to digest all that. You're not trying to consume it all in four days, right? And and you can also pick and choose what it is that you study. I mean, if it's just you at home with a book and the internet, um, you know, you can skip over chapters that you feel aren't going to be pertinent to what it is that you need. Whereas you're not necessarily able to do that in a course. Exactly. What's pertinent to your your job role? Yep. Uh, because if I'm a data center admin, if I'm working with physical servers today and we're becoming a, a more and more virtualized shop, I know that I'm going to be the guy working with the cloud fabric. So I'm going to focus a little more on Hyper-V, a little more on PowerShell, a little more on, on uh, you know, orchestrator in the context of VMM. And, you know, maybe service manager isn't going to be my thing. Uh, maybe I'm not the monitoring guy. You know, it's okay to know... It's perfectly okay to know just enough about a number of products to effectively perform your job role and specialize and be an expert in those elements of System Center 2012 that are going to be pertinent to you being highly effective um, in the role you're sitting in. Yep. Totally. Um, now, we've mentioned the CEP a couple of times for private cloud. Um, do you have a link to hand where people can jump on over to, to sign up for that community eval? Is it on Connect? Yeah, I'll actually just pull it up here. How I found it was went to, I saw it in Twitter, and I went to Bing, and I typed MS Private Cloud CEP. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send you over a nice link here. All right, we'll include this in the show notes for those listening. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it is certainly worth um, your while. Even if you have no real uh, inkling towards private cloud, I think it's still worthwhile checking it out, having a read through uh, what's there. Um, and y you never know, you may find yourself getting sucked in. Um, 
it's uh, it's an exciting and um, um, well, I mean, technically, it, it does touch um, a broad base of products. So, um, you know, it, it's you don't need to specialise in one particular product or the other. Um, you just need to understand the concept of private cloud or, or cloud itself, um, and from there, you know, you, you can embrace that. That is exactly right. But, but I think that's the main thing. Is I think we have to divorce ourselves from products and thinking about our specialization in terms of products. And we have to, to think of our specialization in terms of our job function. Right. So, so if I'm going to be highly, highly effective as a data center admin that's managing the cloud fabric, it's not important that I know everything about virtual machine manager or or everything about service manager it's important that I have you know deep foundations in certain areas but I'm conversant uh, you know at level 150 in others yep and I actually just sent you a link over Dan from the, the Microsoft Cloud and Server Platform blog which was where Garth Ford, Garth Ford announced the uh, the CEP and okay. has a link where you can go over and it's a, a self one of those self nominating things that It'll tell you that you're going to receive an answer within two or three days. Yep. So for those watching at home, um, you should see that in the uh, in the window in the video. And incidentally, that and incidentally, the uh, the meetings start tomorrow. So you should go out and sign up today and cross your fingers that you can get in, get nominated, get in, and. And before start consuming before it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that that is over at Connect. For those listening in, it's connect.microsoft.com/site1211. Um, but you will need to already be a member on Connect, and I'm sure our savvy audience already is. And you know what would be interesting, Dan, is a discussion about MMS. So we know MMS is the mecca for system center uh, and the, the, you know, the mecca for cloud. Um, there's a way to do a conference right and really walk away with a lot of, of the right information. We should talk about how one works a conference. Yep. Um, early in my career, I had a mentor who was a Microsoft Consulting Services guy. And, and at the time, I was a messaging specialist messaging messaging and directory and he sat me down and said here's how you attack a conference um, and I promptly went to TechEd North America in, in Orlando and it was the most amazing conference I'd ever been to and it would be interesting sometime before we get to MMS to talk to everybody about how you make MMS the most amazing conference for you professionally Although I have to, I have to warn: if you follow my my plan for attacking a conference, you'll probably walk away without any T-shirts. <laughs> but you will walk away with what you need to make enough money to buy all the T-shirts you want. Right. So. Yeah, and and let's be honest, you know, um, I think I'd rather, you know, duck out of the conference and and walk a, a few meters down the road to uh, to buy a T-shirt rather than. You know, some of the T-shirts that you get there are a little ordinary. Oh, I think we may have lost Pete. He's frozen. Uh, bear with me. No, he's still there. Still in conference. But his uh, video seems to have stopped. Is his audio still there? Pete, are you there? No, it seems as though I've lost, I've dropped out. Yeah, I have no no internet access. That is really quite unfortunate, um, but I am still recording, so we can at least finish off um, this. Uh, I really do apologise for those listening, but uh, my internet has dropped out. Um, so let me just uh, wrap this up. We uh, We spoke about... Uh, 
I guess what you can expect to see within System Center 2012 um, and the new uh, private cloud offering from Microsoft. Uh, we do encourage you to jump out um, and sign up to the, the MS Private Cloud Community Evaluation Program. That URL again is connect. It's a HTTPS colon slash slash connect.microsoft.com forward slash site one two double one. Um, so jump on over. As Pete said, they're starting their meetings today. So uh, we um, today being uh, Monday, the thirty first of October. Um, I thank everyone for listening. Um, again, I also thank our sponsors, uh, the guys from Savision. Um, head on over to savision.com and check out both live maps and vital signs. Um, but I'm going to uh, call it quits and see if I can fix this internet issue that I have here. Uh, this has been uh, Inside Central. Uh, I've been Dan Kreger. I thank Pete uh, Zerger in absence. Uh, you can find Pete on Twitter at pzerger, Z-E-R-G-E-R. That's at P-Z-E-R-G-E-R. I'm Dan Kreger. That's at Dan, K-R-E-G-O-R on Twitter. Um, you can also find our new website at uh, Inside, uh, here we go, Inside Podcast Network. Sorry, I knew I'd screw that up. So it's InsidePodcastNetwork.tv. If you go to the old URL of SystemCenterPodcast.com, it will uh, redirect you to the new site. Um, we really do welcome um, your feedback and would love to hear from you in regards to what you would like us to discuss on the show if there's a particular topic. Um, if you have any suggestions, um, you know, please feel free to send them through. Um, you can email me at dan at insidepodcastnetwork.tv. That's dan at insidepodcastnetwork.tv. Um, this has been Inside Central. We will talk to you next week.